The last step to completing the mine function within the miner class is adding a function which broadcasts to the peer-to-peer -peer server that all miners should clear their transactions. We'll handle this by adding a new message type within the peer-to-peer -peer server whose key is clear transactions. So the new message type is clear underscore transactions and whose value is to follow the paradigm, an all caps version of clear transactions and then combined with an underscore and then this is the screen case syntax. All right, now let's add a new case in our message handler, which can handle incoming messages with this type. So just like as our chain and transaction message type cases, we'll have a clear transactions message type case. And in this event, we'll call this.transaction pool and then use the clear function to clear out this instance's transaction pool. We also need the important break statement at the end of this switch case. This allows us to now create a broadcast clear transaction function, which sends a message to each connected socket with the corresponding clear transactions message type as its type. So right at the bottom, let's have a new function called broadcast clear transactions. Like our other broadcasting and synchronization functions, we're going to go through each of the socket objects and then run a function. We'll look at each socket one at a time. And then the result of this will be to directly call socket.send. And then we'll send a stringified object because the message handler expects a string. And the only thing the stringified object needs is a type whose type is message underscore types dot clear transactions in order to trigger the clear within the message handler. Excellent. With this completed, this allows us to use the broadcast clear transactions function within the mine function of the miner class. So instead of this comment, we can now say this dot peer to peer server broadcast a clear of the transactions. So broadcast clear transactions is the function. Excellent. As for the final part of this mine function, we'll want other classes to be able to access the generated block from this transaction. So for the very last line, we'll return the block. Perfect. That wraps up the mine function. And by extension, the miner class. Now let's actually create a new miner instance for every user of the application within the main app slash index.js file. Likewise, We'll expose an endpoint, which allows miners to call the mine function that we just created in this miner class by using a specific HTTP request. All right, let's get to creating miner instances next.